On behalf of the authors, I would like to thank you for the opportunity to present our study, a systematic review and a metasynthesis of qualitative studies on stress urinary incontinence in women for the development of a core outcome set. Stress urinary incontinence is a highly prevalent condition in women with a significant impact on the quality of life, interfering with daily activities, psychological well-being, as well as with the sexual function. For this reason, review and use of data from qualitative studies would add insights into patient experience and views on this condition, as well as on treatment and diagnostic workup for stress urinary incontinence. Currently, there is no standardized approach in research methodology, most qualitative studies reporting on a variety of outcomes. This makes data synthesis very difficult and may lead to research waste. One way to address this issue is by developing a core outcome set for stress urinary incontinence. The aim of this study was to synthesize evidence from qualitative studies on women's experiences around stress urinary incontinence and its treatments. Our study contributes to the development of an outcome inventory suggestive for what matters most for patients with stress urinary incontinence and also ensuring that women's priorities are well represented. The aim of this study also falls within the aim of course, an international collaboration for harmonizing outcomes, research and standards in urogynecology and women's health. This international collaboration has particular focus on developing core outcome sets, study protocols, guidelines and minimum practice standards in different women health domains. Core outcome sets represent the minimum outcomes as well as outcome measures that should be evaluated and reported in research and audit, including clinical trials, as well as other types of studies. The development and establishment of core outcome sets does not mean that research outcomes should be restricted to the particular core outcome set. While research can and should investigate other outcomes as well, the core outcome set that will be reported will allow comparisons of outcomes as well as robust systematic reviews and meta-analysis. This systematic review and metasynthesis of qualitative studies has been registered with Prospero. The literature search was carried out in August 2020 when five databases, including Medline, Embase, Scopus, like info and signal were interrogated. The Critical Appraisal Skills Program tool was used for bias assessment and uh, thematic synthesis was the approach used to synthesize data. This study was conducted in line with the preferred reporting items for systematic reviews and meta-analysis guidelines. A number of 348 records were screened by title and those studies, including uh, animals, the ones that used mixed or quantitative methodology, the ones that included male participants, or the ones that were not relevant were excluded. Finally, uh, remaining of 52 articles were screened by abstract, and they were narrowed down to seven papers that met the inclusion criteria. The included studies were published between 1999 and 2019 and included between 13 and 57 participants. The methods used for qualitative data collection were grounded theory, thematic analysis, and narrative analysis. The tools used for data collection were mainly interviews. Data situation was achieved in all except two articles. This slide summarizes the findings of our study and presents the most important themes and sub-themes that emerged from our analysis. The most commonly encountered theme was represented by treatments for stress urinary incontinence, while the least reported one was sexuality. 
future studies may ensure that they report on these uh, particular outcomes to ensure that comparable data becomes available. Given that we analyzed data from primary qualitative studies, we extracted uh, patient quotations reflecting the main themes such as experience of stress urinary incontinence, awareness of this condition, treatments for uh, stress urinary incontinence, sexuality, communication and psychosocial effects. The input from patients suggested that individual aspects matter for women with stress urinary incontinence and also that patient choice should be a priority in choosing treatment for stress urinary incontinence. Moreover, involving patients in clinical decision making would ensure good adherence to treatments. In conclusion, six overarching themes emerged from our study of which treatment had the highest prevalence. Also, women's perception of stress urinary incontinence in the context of a qualitative metasynthesis may inform policy and practice around this condition, may guide and help set research priorities, and also would contribute to the development of a core outcome set for stress urinary incontinence by ensuring that outcomes that matter for patients are being reported.